Hi everyone, it's repair time again. This time I have Shure PSM 900 transmitter for repair. The model is P9T. I was told that this thing does not power up. Let's take a look. So, this is a two channel transmitter for wireless in ear monitors. It can be used as stereo or as two separate mono channels. Here we have a power switch, separate transmitter switch, headphones output with volume, sync with the receiver, rotary encoder with push button, a few buttons, level indicator and LCD display. And on the back we have DC input, 15 volts 550 milliamps, TRS loop outputs, which copy the inputs, two universal inputs, TRS and XLR, and transmitter output. I have a lot of Shure equipment around here, so I have a few power supplies like this. I tried this supply with different equipment, and I tried this transmitter with a different supply. There is no problem with this power supply. So let me show you what happens if this thing is off and I connect the power supply. The LCD backlight lights up for a while, buttons light up. I am not sure this is expected, but nothing changes if I turn this thing on. But if I connect the power supply when the switches in the on position, it boots up and seems to work. I can go through menus, I can operate buttons and so on. I don't have a receiver at the moment and we can check the output with a spectrum analyzer of course, but let's not worry about this for now. There is certainly some problem with power. If I power this off again and on it doesn't boot up again. So let's take the lid off and have a look. Here we are inside and I think I see the problem. There is a tiny chip here with a burn mark on it. Seems to be a voltage regulator or something like that. And also I see a burn mark on this connector as if someone was here with a soldering iron. I wonder how did this happen? So, clearly this uh, tiny package is a voltage regulator and the pinout seems to be typical for these uh, SOT25 packages, sometimes called SOT23-5. Pin uh, 5 is output, pin 1 is input, pin 2 is ground, pin 3 is enabled usually and if not used, connect it to input, which is the case here. And pin 4 is a bit unusual. Most of the time for fixed voltage regulators um, it is not used at all. For adjustable versions uh, it is used for adjusting. And rarely it is used to connect a bypass capacitor for the internal voltage reference, which seems to be the case here and sometimes there are some other variations. So, I see that this output is connected to this capacitor, to this capacitor, and this capacitor, and also this unpopulated uh, connector with markings, and this pin is marked 3.3 .3 volts, and here it is. And the input is uh, connected to this relatively large inductor. I guess uh, there is a step-down converter here next to the DC input connector. Now check this out. This thing is on and the multimeter is in DC voltage mode. I'm using this ground and uh, the input is sitting at 5.16 volts, let's say, and the output is at 4.83. Uh, 
which should be 3.3 volts. So this is potentially dangerous over voltage. I hope it didn't kill anything. I am trying to identify this part. The marking seems to start with P, then possibly H, then something else, and I think I at the end. I'm not entirely sure. It would be nice to know exactly which part is this, to uh, be sure of the current handling capability, let's say, and some other parameters. I browsed through many data sheets, and I can see many possible replacements. But after browsing through many, many more data sheets, I think I might have found the right one. And here it is. I was looking for a part with a bypass capacitor on pin 4. They call it noise reduction here. And on this schematic they show a 10 nanofarad capacitor. I measured the one on the board, it seems to be about 100 nanofarads. So, if we scroll down to this table here with part numbers and markings, the 3.3 volt version is marked PHUI, which seems right. And if so, this is TPS 730, low noise, 200 milliamp, low dropout voltage regulator by Texas Instruments. The package is SOT235, and the size is right, and here they are on Mauser. 85 cents a piece, or 70 cents each for 10 pieces, and plenty in stock. Here they are, arrived from Mauser. Let's take a look. Is this the right part? I would think so. So, now the voltage is OK, here it is, 3.3 volts, but I see exactly the same behavior. No change when I turn it on, and plugging it in when it's already on seems to work. But if I turn it off and on again, it doesn't boot again. So, we fixed the voltage regulator, but something else is wrong. Look at this. I did not notice this before. Do you see that resistor or something, which seems to be out of place? That one. Yeah, 
I think I will have to remove the board from the case to reach there. Okay, I took the board out and my theory is that um, the connector must have uh, a bit of a play in the hole and that grounding piece perhaps rotated a bit when uh, someone uh, tightened this nut, perhaps too much and then knocked the resistor off. Here it is. I hope the resistor survived, otherwise how do I know the value? Let's check. Seems to be one meg. I cleaned the pads on the board, but as you can see there are no pads on the bottom of the resistor. So we need a new one. I found one which is a bit larger. I believe the original one is 0603 and this one is 0805. But I think I can still make it work like so. The resistor is soldered, let's test. And I still wonder what happened to this connector, as if someone tried to solder the pins together. I removed this connector to check. It was sitting like this. But look, this flat part should face down. And also, do you see how these uh, capacitor pins are bent around the positive pin? Clearly this connector was forced to rotate a bit. Let's test. Seems to be exactly the same problem. Yes, something else is wrong. Now let's look at this part. The designator is Q, so it must be a transistor. And we can see thick traces to this pin and this pin, and thin trace to this pin. So, it must be switching the positive uh, power rail or something using this um, signal. And uh, this um, pinout is typical for P-channel MOSFET. So it's uh, switching positive side, so it must be P-channel. And uh, this is gate, source and drain. And the marking is 52 APH. And I see that this thing is shorted. I removed the transistor and the short is gone. Unfortunately, I couldn't find anything based on the marking, but I happen to have these uh, transistors. They can handle up to 20 volts, the on resistance is about 120 or 150 milliohms, depending on the gate uh, voltage. They can handle up to 3 amps, and that's uh, good enough for our application. We only need half an amp or something like that. So these are not the best ones, but should do the job. New transistor is installed. Let's test. Look at this. The switch is in the off position and nothing lights up. And it turns on and seems to be fixed. Now let's check the output. This thing is configurable. The output power can be set to 10, 50 or 100 milliwatts. Now it is set to 100 milliwatts. The frequency is set to 506, 125 megahertz. And 100 milliwatts is 20 dBm, which is the maximum for this analyzer. So I'm using a 10 dB attenuator here just to be safe. 
and I set the frequency already here. Let's turn the RF power on. There is some delay. And here we are. As expected, plus 10 dBm. No problem. So I straightened the capacitor pins and installed the connector the right way. And that grounding tab now is facing almost up. This should work fine, unless someone over tightens this nut again. It's back together. Thanks for watching. Bye.